Hey everybody, Janice Whiting here. I am Fun Stampers Journey Coach number 49, and in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about using your pan pastels with our Fun Stampers Journey modeling paste and some stencils. Ready to find out what we can do? All right, here goes. Okay, so here we go. Now, I wanted to start off by showing you these sheets that come with your pan pastels. So, um, in my previous video, I showed you the pans and how they, the kind of the packaging that they come in. Um, and each of them come with this sheet. Now, I've taken mine out of their box and have put them into um, a little plastic um sheet protector just to keep mine in good condition. Um, but these are full of wonderful information and just some really good, beautiful, you know, images and, and uh, coloring that they did. Now I'll go ahead and kind of zoom in here a little bit to show you. Now this one that we're working with today is our Rich Sorbets set. And I'm gonna try to get this up here without it reflecting too badly. Okay, so now you can see the colors are Deep Lilac, Huckleberry Fusion, Summer Days, Sweet Berry, Pumpkin Bread, Kiwi Slice, and Pretty Pansy. So all of our pan pastels um, coordinate with all of our Fun Stampers Journey colors. So very fun. Now just some things I want you to notice about these sheets. Really great information here. It tells you what the pan pastels uh, colors are compatible with. Okay, and it says most artists colors including pencils, pastel sticks, acrylics, watercolors, inks, markers, um, and encaustic. Um, art and craft surfaces, high tooth and very low tooth, spray, pastel fixatives, and finishes. Okay, so that's really good information. And then if I flip it over to this side, then we have some great techniques. So if you are just completely new to pan pastels, you can read through here. It says easy to use, they're mixable, blocking blocking in and layering, and they're erasable. And of course it tells you what it comes with um, and it's some other great information here that um, you can read when you receive these. Um, anyway, I, like I said, put mine in these little sheet protectors and I have both sets. Um, if you remember from my last um, video, I used the Mother Nature set um, that had those. But in this one, I'm going to focus on the Rich Sorbets, which I found to be gorgeous. I mean, they all are, right? Okay, so first I want to show you what I did, and then I'll show you how I did it. So I'm going to go ahead, and if you'll excuse my messy mat here, I'm sure you are all familiar with the messy mat areas. Um, but first, let me go ahead and start with this card and see if, gosh, that lighting is terrible. Let's see if I can go a little bit. Now, gosh, I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but my screen is not picking up these gorgeous colors because these colors are beautiful. This has some of the sweet berry, some of the um, huckleberry fusion, and the pretty pansy in here, which I'm kind of bummed it's not coming, but it's a really pretty color. Maybe I'll take a picture and add it on the end of the video. So I wanted to keep my card pretty simple because um, if you see it in person, these colors are vibrant, really beautiful, and of course the stenciling is gorgeous which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so there's just a little project I did. And then I did a few different uh, sample sheets here that I wanted to show you. Um, playing with these pastels, aren't these fun? Okay, now here's what I did on this one. On this one, you ready? I actually mixed the pan pastels with modeling paste and, and I created these fun um, different shades. And then on this side, I actually stenciled. So let me see if I can zoom in or bring this up to the camera a little bit and let's see if y'all can see the texture on that. I don't really know if it's visible or not. Maybe that is a good one, I'm not sure. But I'm about to show you how I did it. So here's one, another one, and then, isn't this gorgeous? Okay, well that picked up the color for sure. Um, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so this is one of our stencils, which again, I will uh, tell you more about in a minute, but I just kind of wanted to show you some of these. So I was just kind of playing around and I created just some samples. I wanted to show you how I did these. So this background, I, like I said, I actually turned into a card, the little tag piece here. 
Um, and then these I'm going to turn into a project, just haven't yet. I just was kind of playing with the different techniques and things. So let me go ahead and get started with how I created. Um, let's see, I think I want to start with this one first because this was a really fun technique. All right? Okay, so here we go. Now I wanted to start off with showing you guys how I actually um, made this pattern. Now I used one of our Fun Stampers Journey stencils and the one I used for this one is called Falling Petals and it actually does not come with this image on it. It comes with it blank but I thought for my purposes and for storing and making sure I know which one is called I actually before I even used it I actually just kind of sponged ink all over it so that I know what Falling Petals looks like. Of course eventually I'm gonna know what Falling Petals looks like but just as I get you know started Started with these and as I try to remember them and just for ease of finding them um, I went ahead and inked them so I know which ones which so I started with falling petals and okay so there's a few different ways that you can um, create an image using stencils of course you can do as I just said which is use an ink pad and a little dauber and just kind of daub all over and that's with using ink um, but for what we're doing and for what I did here is I used our modeling paste. So Fun Stampers Journey has an awesome selection of mixed media um, supplies and this is our Journey modeling paste. And I wanted to just point out a few things because you might not have a clue what Journey modeling paste is. So I wanted to read um, just a few of the things that they say that you can um, do and use. Let's see if I can get a non-glare, okay? So basically, and I'm not going to read everything here, but modeling paste is basically a fun paste that you can use to add dimension to your projects. Now, what they he say here is to stir well before use. To, it has a slow drying process, so it doesn't dry too terribly fast. Um, it hardens once it's dry. Once it's dry, you can add paint or um, anything else up on top to it. You can mix it with acrylic paint to create different colors of paste. It does say that it will crack once it's dry. Um, and it says do not use with oils. Now, you just have to forgive me because um, I'm a uh, middle school art teacher and I love to play around. And I do follow the rules, but I feel like once you have your rules kind of well understood, and I'm thinking this is something from Pablo Picasso, but once you know the art rules well, well then you can break those rules, right? So no, learn your rules so that you know how to break them. So it says not to use with oils, and so I definitely recommend that. But I got to playing, and I was like, I wonder if I can mix my pastels with this modeling paste. And as I show you, you can. Now they are an oil base, but they may not be, um, they might not have... Uh, too much oil in them, so I had a really great result. So that is what I'm going to show you first. Now, um, what I did, and I'll just show you here the paste, and of course we have our Fun Stampers Journey spatula here. Um, and it does say to stir, and I've already stirred this a bit, and look at the consistency here of your paste. It's just like, think of it as like a really thick paint. Um, and it all, it, the whole purpose of this is to add dimension to your projects. And so this is one way you can do it. Now what I did was I grabbed, let me get that out of the way because I'm going to mix my colors first. So let me get, so let's see, I think this is our sweet berry. And I literally grab just a wee bit and I tap it onto my mat. Okay, see how there's some coming out? I just did two little swabs. I probably should have just done one. And then I grab some of my modeling paste. And again, it just depends on how much you need. I don't need very much, so I'm just grabbing a bit. And what I did was I just started to mix those two together and I blended them using my spatula. And I literally just did this over and over again until it was mixed in well enough. And of course, if I wanted to add a little bit more color, I could tap some more color on my sheet and then kind of bring it in. You're almost kind of folding it in a little bit, so smushing it until it gets the, the right color. So once I've gotten uh, it all kind of folded in, then look, you've got a tinted modeling paste and it's a really pretty uh, pastel color. So now you can add it to your uh, 
whatever piece of cardstock or project using either directly on, okay, whatever the um, image you want. So maybe you want to kind of do a fun little ombre effect or um, a little swirl. But again, in this ex in this video, I'm showing you how to use your stencil. So. I'm just doing something really random. You know, when I did my card here piece, I, my piece here, I didn't necessarily have a specific design in mind. I just wanted to play around and see what colors I could get. Um, so, and just for the sake of this example, I'm just laying the stencil directly over my paper that I want to use. And I don't know, maybe I just want to, maybe I'll do the corners this time. So using your spatula or the edges, you can literally just smooth it over the area that you want it to pick up. And these spatulas are fantastic, so highly recommend getting these if you want to try out some of our Journey Media. Um, and it just smooths right out. So you can see how it's picked up the modeling paste here. Now, if I was re if I was wanting to add more, I could mix some more colors. I could come in and add different areas here. Basically, the design option is completely up to you. I just wanted to show you the process. So then once you're done, you would then pick up your uh, stencil ever so carefully. And then voila, you have your tinted modeling paste using the pan pastels and my by the way I should point out that I did not use hardly hardly any of that um, and look at that pretty pink that came out of the sweet berry. So fun, different way to use your pan pastels using our modeling paste. Now one note using our stencils you definitely want to um, have a wet wipe or a rag nearby so that the modeling paste doesn't uh, harden on it. it. It You can clean it off just fine, um, but after I was using these with the modeling paste and the pan pastels, it was, and I had just kind of set them aside, it was a pain in the butt and I would rather just have easy um, cleanup than, than not. <laughs> so anyway, just a tip there. Okay, so there's one way to use them, right? Using the pan pastels with the modeling paste. Another way is to just stencil the pen pastels directly onto your image or onto your um, media. So let me just take a scrap piece of paper here. I'm not really using that for anything other than just the purposes of this um, example. And then I'll take that same stencil and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how easy it is to stencil this um, these pan pastels over it. So hold it on, hold on, so kind of even per, uh, firm pressure over your stencil, and then just wherever you want it, you know, just press, I'm actually pressing pretty firmly, okay, and let's just say I wanted to add, I don't know, maybe some of the darker purple here, or deep lilac. Make, as long as you hold it tight, if it kind of lifts up like that, you're not, you don't have to worry so much. And then maybe I'm gonna bring some of this huckleberry here on the edges. And we'll just call it good at that, okay? So once you've kind of finished with the design that you want, you can lift up. Isn't that pretty? And then you've got your gorgeous stencil design. Now here's the thing, one thing to know about stenciling using pan pastels. So normally you don't have to worry so much about um, it smearing or smudging because when you are applying the pastels directly to your paper, you are rubbing it in and it takes it and you don't have to worry about any residue, any dust showing, and it doesn't smear. You literally can rub your finger over it and it doesn't have very much dust or any residue. When you use a stencil, because it's not as a firm pressure is being applied and you've got some just some areas for, I mean, just a little bit of lift, you're gonna have some more dust and it can easily smear at that point. So here's what I recommend. Blow on it. Get all that loose dust out of the way, and then if you're concerned that it will smear, definitely spray a fixative over it, okay? Now, I know some people out there have some allergies and they you know, can't do those strong fixatives. Do your research, and I know that there are some out there that have low odor 
know what you can handle, okay? But that would be my suggestion. There actually are some hairsprays that you can use um, that would work as well. I, like I said, I'm an art teacher. I've tried just about everything. Uh, luckily, I don't have any major allergies, and so they've all been pretty good for me. Um, so use what you have, or, or if you want to, if you're real concerned, then go ahead and get one of those archival fixatives that will work with pastels, okay? They're actually very easy to find in your local craft store. Um, okay, so there we go. We did our pastel mixing with our modeling paste, okay? And we did our pan pastels with stencils. Let's go ahead and use our pan pastels to actually color once our modeling paste is dry. So here's a sheet that I have used our uh, falling petals over and I at this point I just want to color it and, and add some more color to it and I have let it I have let it dry okay so um, you can once you apply the modeling paste you can't directly apply the pastels over it before it dries because it'll just smear, right? And that's a whole nother thing. I mean, you can, it's just a whole nother look there. Um, so for this example, I wanted to take um, one of these here and I wanted to show you how I created, um, and actually let me show you this one here. I'll pull this one aside. I wanted to show you how I created this fun, um, to me, it looks like honeycomb, but this is actually our, um, let's see here, our vintage screen um, stencil. And here's the stencil fully, so vintage screen. Um, anyway, I thought it looked like a honeycomb, so I went th with the yellow. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna use our, sum uh, excuse me, summer days, I believe, and our pumpkin spice here on this one. And what I did was I kept a little bit of the white on the edges and I just added some of these, uh, the pumpkin spice, just kind of here and there. This one I wanted it to be more random. Um, and again, it doesn't require much color, just a little bit. And just kind of go wherever you kind of feel like you want the color to be. I want it to go over that pumpkin spice to make it a little bit more orangey. And then, voila, you've got this really fun, really cool background that you can then use for a project card. Um, it would just be a really fun, really cool um, image to put either behind um, a fun um, greeting, sentiment, who knows, whatever, whatever. So I'm actually going to take these and I'm going to create something with it. And I will make sure to post it when I do, okay? So there you go. So there's what, number three? I think I taught you two so far. So you can actually color your modeling, modeling paste with these. You can stencil directly onto paper. So that's this one. Right, and then, then once your modeling paste dries, you can add color directly to it once it's dry. Really simply, and it picks it up beautifully. Okay, so there we go. And um, I wanted to go ahead and show you how I created my card, last but not least. And I'm gonna take this nasty thing out of the way. So I wanted to show you how I created that gorgeous background. And let me see if it will pick up that color a little bit better than it did earlier. Yeah. Y'all, I promise you, it's gorgeous. The color is really pretty. Um, but let me go ahead and show you how I did that one. So here I have a little sample of what it looked like before I added the color to it. And I'm sure you're all wondering what stencil I used. And I used the stencil called Circle Bliss. So there's that one. And remember, I... Um, I actually stenciled over um, on top here to make sure that I had the image onto the black or this back sheet so that I would have it. So anyway, I took the stencil, I applied our modeling paste over a black piece of cardstock, and then I let it dry, okay? Now also another tip, if you're in a hurry and you want it to dry quickly, then use your um, heating gun that we have and that'll um, make it go a little bit faster, okay? Okay, so then what I did was, and I'll just show you this one more time, I actually started with light, that light, the sweet berry in the middle, and then I went with the pretty pansy around it, and then I went with the huckleberry fusion on the ends. 
Now because I'm using um, a black cardstock, the colors are a little, they just come up a little bit different than they would on white, okay? But I love it. All right, so let me show you what I did. Again, fairly simple. This technique is the same as when I added the color to the vintage screen, except for now I'm using the black cardstock. So I'm gonna start with Sweet Berry, and I'm just gonna add it to this center and I wanted it to be really bright. And I'm kind of killing myself here that the fact that it's not showing up. I mean, it shows up pink, but it's so much more vibrant on, on my, in real life. Okay, so I did pink there, our sweet berry, and then I grabbed, what did I say? Violet, deep lilac, deep lilac. And this one, I just went around the edges. Now you should be able to pick up that it is darker. And I just kind of went, I wanted the huckleberry to be only kind of in the corners and on the edges there. And you can actually blend really well. So remember how I told you I like to break the rules a little bit? Um, you know, generally speaking, when you blend, you always like to go from light to dark. But me being Miss Rule Breaker, you can actually do both. It just depends on the look that you want to achieve, okay? So don't freak out. The rules are there for a reason, but I kind of like to break them. And I want you to try to. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the Huckleberry. Bring it on over. To my edges. Ooh, that is gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, I love it. And I think I might even add a little bit of um, our Pretty Pansy to kind of even add another layer of color here. Oh my gosh, y'all, this, I, I'll be quiet. I know that's annoying for some people when I keep going on and on. Anyway, there you go. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. I can go on and on and on about these um, pan pastels. They're gorgeous. Now, that's it. That's it. I've created it. So if at this point, you take it and you make it into a card. And like I showed you with this one, now with this one, you can see that I changed it up just a wee bit. I did the huckleberry on the corners, and this one I just did the deep lilac. Um, but I kind of like this one better. I like this one too, actually. They're, they're both gorgeous. But because this is so beautiful in and of itself, keep your cards simple. This does it, right? You can just do this in a little sentiment, a little thank you, or a little hello, um, and put it on the top of your card base, and you're done. You don't need much. So it's kind of what I did here. I just wanted to keep it simple, and I... I added a little bow, our little mini, um, our mini bow die. I used our tag, our uh, punch system to create a tag, and then this little hello banner from uh, one of our stamp sets, and it's from the PS Greeting stamp set. I used our vellum, because I thought it'd be fun to just have a, a, a little bit of see-through there, um, and of course our white um, twine in our whipped cream car stock. And I just added it to a car base and that was it. So guys, there you go. I've gone over a few techniques that you can use with your pan pastels. Hopefully this is helpful to you. And just as, re as a review, on this one, I actually mixed pan pastels with our journey, mo journey modeling paste, which is just, think of it as like a thick paint. It's not really paint, but you can think of it like that. It's a paste that you can mix with um, acrylics, you can mix it with our pan pastels, use it directly on a card or use it over a stencil. Then I stenciled a little bit here. Let's see if I can find that one. I stenciled with our 
pan pastels, and I told you that um, when you use stencils, definitely blow um, any excess off and use a fixative if you're afraid that it's going to smear, which it can if you use these stencils. And then with these two examples here, I showed you how once your modeling paste is dry, then you can create a, um, you can just add color to your cards and then use them for a fun background. All right, there you have it. All right, so you might be wondering, how do I get this stuff? Um, so I'm about to tell you. So you might know that our new catalog was live, became live today, so you can order today. Um, it is all up and active, and I'm excited to um, tell you all about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you about the stencils first. So the stencils that I used, um, they are $7.95, okay? And I used Vintage Screen, that was this one. And I used Circle Bliss, so fun. And then of course that first one that I was using is Falling Petals. And I can't find my big one, but here's the little sample of Falling Petals. Um, and those are all $7.95. Now here's my big example of falling petals. Okay, and those are $7.95. Um, our modeling paste, this little tub right here, which may not seem like a lot, but it actually goes a long way. I've done uh, quite a few projects already with just this little bit, and you saw how much I had. Um, so that is, for this jar, it's two ounces, and it is also $7.95, okay? Um, the spatula, which is fantastic to have. It's not one of those cheap plastic ones. It's got a really nice wooden handle and some metal, and it is $3.95. Of course, of course, that was kind of, you know, our stencils and the paste is, um, a big part of what I showed you today, but who are the heroes? In my mind, I think I know. I think you know who the heroes are. The heroes are our gorgeous pan pastels, okay? Um, and that set, all the sets that I'm going to be showing you um, are $49.95. Now, don't forget, you get a set of seven pans, okay, and a lid, and you get the um, applicator tool, you get large sponge, you get a finger sponge, and you get the little bitty little sponges that go on top of the applicator tool. Okay, so all that comes with it um, for $49.95. So if you think about it, it's a little less than $7 per color. Um, they're beautiful. You're gonna, they're gonna last forever. You probably won't buy a second set if you buy one. Um, and of course, all of our various color palettes that we have here. Okay, so I, that first video was Mother Nature. This video I did uh, Rich Sorbets, and uh, we'll see which one I'll do next. But I've got two, and I've got more uh, techniques to show you. Of course, if you have any questions about any of the techniques that I've shown you in this video, please comment below. I'm glad to um, answer any questions and help you how, uh, whichever way I can. Again, if, you can, if you'd like to order from me, then come on, just go to my website, which is www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting, and just click the shop button. Pretty simple. Um, I think that's it for today. I'm going to take some pictures of these, and hopefully this color will show up a little bit better. I don't know if it does or not. Yeah, we'll see uh, for you, and I'll add them to the end of this video. All right, until next time, see you later.